What I'm going to show you is much more of an intermediate to advanced Coda workflow, but it is one of the most common questions that I get from my clients. So I'm going to show you how to solve this today. Let's go. All right, this is one of the most common issues my clients have. And so let's set the scene a little bit. Let's say you have a task board here of different tasks. Um, notice that you can just take these cards and drag them over to different statuses and it will change it. The issue with that is sometimes you may not want your team to manually just drag things around for a couple reasons. One, someone may drag one into an incorrect spot. They just don't really know what they're doing. The other thing that may be happening is that maybe there's an approval process or flow where they need to do other actions prior to being able to move these. So. The solve to this is twofold. So first thing, we need to disable the ability to drag. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna set this grouping status, requested, started, in progress, to a formula. So you'll notice that right now, if I turn this back to a table, and let's take off grouping, you'll notice that this status column is um, controlling the w grouping of the cards and where they're at and that I can actually just change these. So what I'm gonna actually do is first make a replica of this column. So let's go ahead and we're gonna call this, uh, let's call this status edit. And then this one is actually gonna be called status. So what I'm gonna do is just set this equal to a formula. I'm gonna press the equal button on my keyboard, not for the name of the column. Uh, select the column, press the equal button on your keyboard and you're gonna be brought up to a formula. We're all we're gonna say is status edit. We're just referencing that status itself. And to bring those beautiful colors in, we just need to set the column type of this to a relation in a lookup, boom. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, let's say this is the request to do the thing and other stuff and two, three and four, okay. What we're gonna do now is turn this back into a board and you'll notice that, shpoop. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hide a couple of my columns to make it look a little nicer. But now you'll see here's my different tasks and you'll see that as I drag this, it says cannot move row to this group because it's calculated, great. So now I've disabled the ability to drag these, but how do I allow the user to still move this forward in a sequential process? Uh, the way that you're gonna do that is based off a button. The way that we know that is because we need to modify a row. Where these cards sit is directly related to its actual status, right? So if I take this, let's turn it into a table. We remember that these are actually set by this status column here called status edit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a button column that's gonna go ahead and use a modify row action to modify these. But um, we're gonna see move forward. We don't wanna have five buttons, right? You don't wanna have five buttons. One is called make requested, make started, make in progress, okay? It's not good, it's gonna be cluttered and there's gonna be all these buttons that are showing up in the card. We want one button that's just gonna move these cards to the next line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first off, let's just set this column type to a button, right? And on click, when I click this button, I want to modify rows. Uh, what is the table I wanna modify? I wanna modify this row, okay? So, and I wanna take my select and I wanna change the status edit column. Now what I'm gonna do is over here on my update values, I am going to need to dynamically change this, right? I'm gonna to need to be able to change what value this updates to dependent on what value is currently in that cell. So let's think through that. So first off, uh, let's give this an order. Let's go back to this table. So here is the table itself. Requested, started, in progress, complete, and archived. What I'm gonna do is call it step or order, right? Let's just call it step. This is step in your process. This is step one, two, three, four, and step five. This is gonna help us define, um, it's gonna help the button know which step to do, right? Because if you're on step two, the obvious next step is step three. So let's go to our button and I'm gonna press the equal button on my keyboard to just get to this editor faster. So status edit, we wanna press the equal button here to define a dynamic value. Let's pop open that formula as well to make it a bit bigger. So what is this button gonna do? First, let's find out where it currently is. So let's say uh, this row dot status edit 
dot step. Right, so that's where we currently are. I'm gonna use a formula called with name. This is a more advanced code of formula, but it's a way to give a name to something. So um, I'm gonna call this current step, right? It's where we currently are. So now what I'm gonna do that I've named that is I'm gonna say uh, modify rows. Uh, no, I'm already modifying rows. Okay, I'm just setting the value to it. I'm gonna set it to status. So I want the next one whatever is current step plus one. So I'm gonna say status. So go to the status table coda and I want you to filter it. I want you to find a certain row. The row that I want you to find is the one that where the step is equal to my current step plus one, okay? This status dot filter where step equals current step plus one is gonna return a list of rows, even if that list is one. So I'm gonna say, hey, first, don't give me a list of rows, just give me the first item in that row, okay? So let's format that. Um, there we go, we've got, we're gonna set that. There's a couple other things we need to do though, right? Because what if you're on the last step? We wanna disable that button. So let's go ahead now and press done for that formula. And now let's say, hey, button, can you disable if I'm going to draw a formula and we're going to say status edit dot step is equal to, we want to find out if it's the last step and we don't want to just say five because what if you add a sixth step later on? We want to say status, which grabs the entire table dot uh, step dot max. So that's just saying, hey, if the step of the current status is the is the same thing as the highest number in the status step column, then disable this button. So you'll notice when I am in archived, that modify row button is um, is done for. All right, so there's a couple other things we could do real fast. Let's just change it visually as well. Let's change this visual to a formula as well. And we'll just say format. We'll say move to, and then we'll say number one. So I'm just gonna take the label of this button and tell them what they're moving it to, right? And we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do status dot filter. Mm, let's do the same thing. Let's actually do status edit dot step um, dot. Mm, nah, we can do this without with name. We can do it a little simpler. Let's just do status dot filter. So go look at the status table, filter through it, find the one where the step is equal to the status edit dot step uh, plus one. Notice that that brings out that blue chip. We don't want that blue chip there. We just want the actual value. What value is inside there? It is dot status dot first. All right, move to requested. So notice now that it says move to requested, I like this. I'm gonna have a right arrow, um, arrow bump move to in progress. Now what we're gonna do lastly is just show that button on our actual cards and it's gonna be called move forward. So now you'll see that we have here, uh, move to started, move to in progress, move to complete. If I press this button, that moves over. If I press that, that moves to complete. Um, and so now we cannot drag these, but we can move these over. Your last step, if there's approval processes, is just to play with the disable criteria on this button, right? Maybe it has to be a three in order to move forward, right? If, unless this card is tagged as a three or unless a manager has clicked an approve box, disable this button, right? So this will allow you to take complete control over your pipelines, over your workflows, um, and to really make a coded doc and a Kanban pipeline work for your team. Put some questions below in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. If you need to know anything else, adios.